All right here we've got our bottom swell and one of our sheet mulched areas where I guess it'll kind of make sense that we're going to extend the sheet mulching off that swell and the last swell as well, the top swell. And you can see how we've done that there. I'll start with this little bottom piece below the little bottom sill here. So you can see this is our last sill on the property. And uh, when this sill, when the swell exceeds capacity, it's this sill that lets that water weep out here and go over there into that ditch, which is where it would have went anyway, just a hell of a lot more of it, a hell of a lot faster. So everything's basically still working as far as the total flow off the land the same way it always did. And we let it out there because we knew we wouldn't put it somewhere that somebody didn't want it or that somebody could complain about it because it's always been there. Um, but as we come down toward this side of the property, the rock formation comes up. And when I talk about rock, you can get an idea and I should have showed you in that first swell because it's much worse down at that end. In fact, I'd say that swell right there, from about right there on the left, down to about right behind that, that that's further tree away, that's not even a swell, that's a diversion drain because we had to come up off contour for that last piece. We just couldn't stay down at a foot of depth. Here we were able to do it with a few little lumps in the road, so to speak. But this swell gets real pretty after you go around that bend. But this area here we sheet mulched and we just brought in some compost and some straw and some leaves and some wood chips and we sheet mulched it. And this is where I have put it, put in my, uh, my experiment with sea berries, which are not supposed to grow in Texas. These things are hardy to like zone three. I think maybe zone two if you treat them right. We're down here in zone eight, 100 degree summers. We've already hit 100. And they're all doing well except this one little one here. And she's even still alive. That's a known female, known variety of sea berry. That's another female known variety of sea berry. She's doing okay. You can see this area is shady, even for now. And it only gets a few hours of heavy sun every day and it gets dappled sun throughout the day. And by late day when it's baking hot, it's fully shaded. So that's why I put them here. And tucked in with them are some aronias. Well, those are all aronias right there where you see the flags marked so I don't step on them because they're easy to step on. Everybody's doing good except this one right here. And I'm pretty sure the geese ate it because they wanted to know what it was. They didn't like it, but they'll eat one to find out. So hopefully it'll, it'll sprout back out. But this is sheet mulch. And I'm going to show you some other stuff. And the sheet mulch is doing really good. See that kind of disturbed spot right there? There's a few disturbed spots. I just inoculated all of that with mushrooms because it's nice and shady down here, and that's why it's disturbed looking. But this is the only place we did any real soil amendments. As you look at the plants in these swales, and you see how some of them are really struggling, I want you to compare it to the video that'll be later toward in the series, where I'm gonna show you where our hoogle beds are, where that soil's been heavily amended. This is a harsh environment down here. Even though we've helped it with the swelling, this is an alkaline soil. It's about 7.6 to 7.8 or higher. It's almost dead. The only way we've improved it is through cover cropping and chop and dropping, and it's less than a year old. It won't be a year old until November. Um, now, right there, there's a little plum that we planted, and it's doing okay. Down at the end, there's one that died. I don't even understand. That's an all red plum. We put it in, it looked dead. It never sprouted. Uh, then about a month ago, it, it came alive, like a creature from the Black Lagoon or something. It just sprouted. And then it looked good for like a week and then it died again. So I don't know if that thing's going to make it or not, but it's not hurting nothing there. So I'll leave it until fall and we'll see if it sprouts again before fall. If not, we'll yank it out. We'll do the green stem test. There's a Husai Asian pear. You can see it's actually got a pear or two on it. I really should thin that. Got another Asian pear there. That's an Orient pear. Coming up here. If I told you I knew what it was, I'd be making it up in line. Yes, so let me get the... That's a Dorset Golden apple actually that's a dorset golden apple that's an autumn olive oh no it's invasive look at it invade now i'm with ben falk ben falk has a picture on his facebook that shows him picking autumn olive and it says hi i'm autumn olive and i'm as native as you are <laughs> little comfrey coming up there's comfrey all over through here we just planted tons of comfrey it was all from a few cuttings i started um i'll probably finish this and then come show you these two other mulched areas in a different video. That is a jujube right there. You hear me talking about those on the air all the time. Kind of a funky looking tree and we'll let it grow like that and we'll prune that sucker down to about here uh, when it goes into uh, 
deciduous mode and make it kind of bush up. Another one of those white mulberries. Now this is a great plant. Guys, these things, these white mulberries, beautiful days, these are like $30, $40 plants. But every time you uh, take a cutting off and stick it in the ground, you get another one for free. They don't stain. And the reason all my mulberries are white here, see that? That's my neighbor. I do not want him pissed off at me because he's got red bird poop um, on his driveway. There's a uh, another jujube that did not make it. Another autumn olive growing in there as a support species. And I've got more of those coming. There's some... Uh, there's some assertion, and look, squash. Yeah, there's some squash and some other vegetables through here. There's cucumber laying there. There's an assertion. That's my gardening this year. I am I am not messing around with much in annuals at all. We're gonna put in still some uh, some watermelon, and cucumber, and some other places. Uh, back there's some black cohosh. I'll show you that later though. Another big apple. This is a I don't remember what this guy is, but this was like a surprise when I picked this one up. How big this tree was from Bob, and it's doing quite well for itself. Sunflower coming up there, oh, that reminds me. Some people asked about sunflowers and alleopathy. Um, I've grown sunflowers around plants my whole life and I've never seen anything like that. They do have a mild alleopathic uh, uh, property that kind of inhibits the germination of seeds, which is usually your weed seeds. And I think they may have a pretty negative effect if planted heavily enough um, around annuals, but I've never seen them cause any problems for anything. So I'm using them as a support species, even though some people say they're allopathic. Uh, cow pea everywhere. Um, you can see uh, vetch in there. Some winter pea that didn't escape the tr uh, string trimmer. And there's some vetch. And you can see kind of in here where it's a little thin, what I mean about the stubble. So this stubble I left, when I chopped and dropped it, I did not go down here. I went up about four or five inches. So all this straw is kind of being held on against the wind we constantly get. Because even in the uh, winter we get harsh winds. Another plum there. Um, over there are some gooseberries. Another thing that has no real business growing here, but yet they are. A little clump of goose gooseberries. There's several clumps of gooseberry over there. Right down in there is the one I whacked with the weed whacker. You can't see it from this side of the swale. Again, I'm in the swale here on the back side. That's a goomy over there. These sticks are supposed to be wolf berries. That's them wolf berries from the catalog that always die. So I've got the ones in the greenhouse I'll be replacing them with. That's an elderberry. And I want you to look at that elderberry. And I want you to remember that elderberry because later when I show you my uh, zone two food forest uh, that's built on a hookah culture system that's matured for a year that had soil amendments you won't believe the difference in how much stronger those mulberries are doing. Another little mulberry. So we've got mulberry all along this back side of the swale. This is a harsh environment. And as you can see, they're alive. I think we lost one or two. One Charlie dug out of the ground. But, uh, so we can't blame the, the mound for that. But uh, they're going to struggle this year. But they'll put the roots in. And as we improve this soil, they will blow up next year. And we put them on this back side because we knew they could handle it. And... Uh, we come around the other side, another mulberry or uh, elderberry right there, because this is our pharmacy area. That's why we have the elderberries ringing the back side of it. And uh, went ahead and tried some sea berry out here where it's more exposed. And that gal there lived. And that's Garden's Gold, I think, is the variety there. And I put a male in here. He did not live. He died. Um, and I also had another little female seaberry right where that stick is there. She died. So that's a lone survivor, which means she's pretty hardy. And if she makes it through August here, we're going to have to play with those genetics and see what we can do with them. Um, the Sertium growing with comfrey. This is Gumi, you hear me talking about. Autumn olive relative, except people don't hate this one. It's a really great antioxidant. More gooseberry, more gooseberry, more Gumi. Basically, this whole area is a clump of wolfberry Gumi and uh and gooseberries so this is kind of the, the mainframe piece of our our uh i guess you would call it our pharmacy and uh what i'll do is i'll uh i'll pause the camera and i'll show you this mulched area and tell you what it's going to do and then i'll take you over and show you that in the next video and uh, then we'll move on from there